What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Mr. Tackle Box unboxing here on the channel. Uh, appreciate you guys clicking on the video. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, one, I don't have a table to do this on and I wanted to have this kind of background um, with the Christmas tree and, and the flag. So, But this is for the month of December. Um, I know I'm late on uploading this. I've had the box for quite a bit now. I think I got it just before the 7th. Uh, but I wanted some, I wanted a good amount of time to work with the baits in the box. Um, I got a good amount of footage working or, or, you know, working with the baits at Thresh Lagos and at Fireman's Park. Unfortunately, yesterday when I tried to film this the first time, my GoPro somehow deleted all the footage I had on it besides the one I already had put on my phone here. Vibration in that darker water. I went today Oops, that was my GoPro. So, I lost all the footage, I do apologize. It is gonna be a lot shorter than I wanted it to be. Um, next time, you know, I'm gonna take precautions to make sure I don't lose any of my footage. But, uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. I'm gonna do it from right here. The box is right here. Uh, I'm just gonna be showing you the baits, you know, face to face like this, just because I don't have a table. I'm working on another chair here. So, but let's go ahead and get to it. So as we open the box, as always, we always get the uh, what's inside guide. That's everything that's in there. Let's see if I can get the focus. So the first thing I grab is a Booyah Bait Swimming Jig. It's a, what's that, a half ounce swim jig, and I think it's Prairie Fire. Yeah, I, I did work with this quite a bit. Um, uh, I used a trailer that actually comes in this box as well. Um, which I'll, I'll get to next. But if you, it's a swim jig. It's got that kind of a bladed head to it. It's real flat. So you can see it, it's real flat. It's got a lot of, um, you know, it's real hydrodynamic. Uh, and that's also got some rattles in the tube here. It's got some rattles in the tube. So I don't wanna focus. But it's supposed to make some noise. And you know, this, and it's got that kind of a more natural, kind of a light brown, and then a, kind of like a watermelon red flake towards the top. And I paired it with the next bait, which is the 10,000 Fish Saw Craw. They like to have really like rhyming names. That's their thing, I guess, with the Shimmer Swimmer. And, well, the Scushy Bug wasn't rhyming. But anyways, it seems like that's the kind of path they're going. But we'll go ahead and take one out. I did already use one. And they have a real strong scent to them. So if you get these, just you know, make, wash your hands afterwards. But it's a Smokeachobee craw color. That's what it's. That's what it says in the packaging, anyways. And it's kind of got that smoke underbelly. That you know, basically a pearl white, and then a the green pumpkin on the top. All black flake. You know, not much. In real natural color. Real natural color. All right. So next paint that I grabbed is this Throwback Lures Trailblazer. It's the most expensive one that came in the box for retail. It retails for $9.99, 10 bucks. Let me go ahead and take it out of the package. I did get a chance to use this. The action on this is really good. I'm guessing they're kind of going for the, like that, um, that shad, a jointed shad bait that was real popular on, on Shop Carl's. That's kind of basically the same thing. Uh, but it has some really good action, both as just a standard uh, slow retrieve swim bait and as a jerk bait, you know, I did, add a little bit more action to it and it had that kind of jerk bait quality where it would it, it wouldn't sink right away it would kind of pause and then it would start to sink so that's also another way you could retrieve this as always too guys you get the dibble as well dibbles the digest or or i guess double digest but just the dough book just just tips and tricks on how to normally um work the baits that are in this box sometimes just overall stuff like Things like that, you know, it's actually really handy if you get, a, if you have a lot of these, you can always go back to these things and think of something you hadn't been doing. It's, I find them really helpful. And so this bait, this next bait, I actually did not get a chance to use just because the waters I was fishing are not deep enough for it. It's the uh, Vex and Vern Stone Roller. It's a deep diving crankbait. It's got that big lip. Uh, it's got a lot of rattle in it too. Uh, let's go ahead and take it out real quick. This one retails for $7.99, so it's the second most expensive one. But it's got that big, big flat lip, made to go to those deep depths. Uh, you know, at Tres Lagos and at Fireman's Park, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't get deep enough to use something like this. 
especially at Fireman's Park, this is way too much grass. Um, but it's got some neat, nice colors to it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the colorway is. Kobe Bass Candy is what this one is. So it's got that kind of a blue and then moves down to a chartreuse and got some flake in it down to a white belly. Kind of like a shad color, but it's got a lot of noise to it. Using this in like bigger, bigger rivers, like the Rio Grande or La Jolla Lake. Where it gets deeper, this is probably a solid, solid bet. Uh, definitely gonna, if I could find a way to go to La Jolla Lake, um, somebody who has access to it, definitely will give this a shot. All right guys, so the, the most successful bait I had, um, and I, they came in this box, was the Riot Baits uh, Probe, or The Probe. P-R-O-B-E, yeah. Retail for just five bucks for this pack, and it's just a trick worm. It's a green pumpkin trick worm. Doesn't have too much scent to it, kind of like a normal plastic scent to it, but it's literally just a green pumpkin black flake trick worm that has a kind of like a rounded bulb at the bottom with a small little uh, subtle action tip, I guess, you know, it's... But, I mean, I put this on a drop shot, which you'll see after we're doing the unboxing, I do have some footage for you guys of me using this specific bait and the next one as well. And also just a random stick bait I use just to get more bites for the video. Um, but this thing immediately was getting me hits right off the bat in this colder weather and a little bit clearer water at Thirst Lagos because they were just, this is, it really, I went from one bait, I went from the next bait to this bait and it really seemed like it was color preference more than anything. But maybe that subtle action on the, uh, you know, that this thing gives is what they were keying on that day and it's what they wanted. All right, so this next bait is actually a first. Uh, first time getting Guggen baits in my mystery tackle box. So I got the Guggen uh, Dragon Drop Worm in the Morning Dawn color. And this was the bait that I just was talking about previously. Um, this is what I initially went to on a, dra on a drop shot and on a shaky head as well. Um, and I got, you know, almost no, no bites, no nothing. Honestly, really surprising. It's a good bait. It's a good looking bait. Uh, the colors are nice. Good for, I mean, this kind of bright stuff. I'm guessing clearer water. That's why, that's why I started out with it. I assume I was gonna get bit on a drop shot and a shaky head on this. And it's got more scent to it. It's got that slon sauce or whatever is, you know, they put the, the, the scent they put on um, the Guggen baits. But I mean, you know, it's got a good profile. It's got everything you want for that subtle tail. But it's just, I have to think it was just the color that wasn't working that day. And they, the bass were having none of it. They didn't really care. I put on that, that Riot Baits trick worm and it just, the bite turned on immediately. So it must've been a color preference. But the last thing is just a set of stickies, EWG four out hooks, which is good. You can use these for just about any of these, really most, most likely with the uh, craw, but it can work on that Guggen Baits too. Um, and just Texas rig everything and just slowly work it on the bottom, things like that. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get to the footage side of this. Um, the video, what little video I have of me working a few of these baits. Um, I'll be playing that uh, the video now and I'm just gonna be doing an audio voiceover explaining what happened, things like that. All right, so the way I just rigged up this uh, Riot Baits trick worm was just a wacky rig style, hooked it right through the meat on a drop shot. The water the water is relatively clear, uh, it was colder, so just went ahead and uh, sent the bait out and just drug it along the bottom, the weight along the bottom and worked it slowly to me. Uh, this is about the third cast, I was already hooked up, and this was a pretty big fit, pretty big bass. And he jumped, as you'll see right there, and he spit the hook. So um, definitely was uh, disappointing, but it gave me some confidence coming from the Guggen Baits uh, Dragon Drop, where I got no bites for about an hour to moving to this and immediately getting a bite. So, you know, changing things up, you know, you got to really look at, you got to really look for what those bass are going to want. So this is the, literally the second cast after losing that fish. I get hooked up again. And this time I 
uh, my first instinct is to keep the rod tip down, make sure fish doesn't jump out of the water, and I'm able to bring him to shore. This is a smaller bass than the one I initially had hooked on, um, but I mean, I'll take it for the first fish of the day. Can't go wrong with that. He even had a weird looking eye there. It was like a gold eye. You can call this guy, this guy golden eye. But um, yeah, it's, it definitely is a lot smaller than the original fish I had on, but I'll definitely take the bite. So I moved over to the uh, opposite side of where I was fishing and hooked up again into a sizable bass, probably the biggest of the day. He jumped out right there and spit the hook again. I must, not, must have not set the hook hard enough, but they definitely wanted this riot baits probe. So I finally, you know, for the final fish of the day, I had to switch over to the stick bait the Yum Dinger Watermelon Red Flake. And initially, I thought that I was just pulling grass until he started to fight back and continue to go the way I was pulling him. I tried to muscle him in, but I was afraid I was gonna break off or pull the hook, so I had to walk with him to the left and just let him you know, tell me where he wanted to go. Sometimes that's what you gotta do when it's a bigger bass. Um, again, granted, this isn't you know a monster bass. He maybe was a pound, pound and a quarter, if that. Probably closer to a pound now looking at him. But, you know, as you can tell, he definitely wanted that ding that dinger. He definitely wanted that stick bait, and he took that hook pretty deep. But good for me. I had pliers. I was prepared and got it, got it out safe and sound, and he was good to go. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for, for subscribing, liking, comment, all this great stuff. We're, I think, at 378 subs, which is awesome. You know, more and more you guys are commenting, you know, interacting with me, and it's great. You know, you can follow me on Instagram, rgv underscore outdoorsman, and you can interact with me more there. I haven't posted anything lately just because of school, things like that. But school's, the semester's over, I'm on break. So now I'm going to use a lot of my free time before I go to work to really try to hammer out some videos i have some things planned a hunting trip coming up super excited about uh, but again thank you guys for watching have a merry christmas and go cowboys beat the eagles